Bayes' theorem. We extend the discussion of conditional probability to include applications of Bayes' theorem or Bayes' rule, which we use for revising a probability value based on additional information that is later obtained. Let's consider a study showing that physicians often give very misleading information when they experience confusion of the inverse. They tend to confuse the probability of cancer provided that you have a positive test result and the probability of having a positive test result given that you have cancer. Now a positive test result indicates that the patient has cancer. A negative test result indicates the patient is cancer free. About 95% of physicians estimated the probability of cancer given that a positive test result has occurred to be about 10 times too high. With the result that patients are given diagnoses that were very misleading and patients were unnecessarily distressed by the incorrect information. So for example 4, interpreting medical test results. Okay, Assume cancer has a 1% prevalence rate, meaning that 1% of the population has cancer. Denoting the event of having cancer by the event letter C, we have the probability of C is equal to 0 0.01 since that is 1%, meaning that if we change that to a decimal, that would be 0 0.01 for a subject randomly selected from the population. This result is included with the following performance characteristics of the test for cancer. So the probability of cancer is equal to 0 0.01 where we saw here that there is a 1% prevalence rate of cancer. Now the false positive rate is 10%. That is the probability of a positive test result given that cancer is not present is equal to 0 0.10. The true positive rate is 80%. That is, the probability that a positive test result given that cancer is present is equal to 0 0.80. So we want to be able to do is find the probability of the event of having cancer provided that you have a positive test result. Again, that is, find the probability that a subject actually has cancer given that he or she has a positive test result. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the given information so we can construct a hypothetical population with the above characteristics. Okay, so here's our table. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. Okay, now using that information, assume that we have 1,000 subjects with a 1% prevalence rate. So if that's a 1% prevalence rate, that tells us the following. That tells us that if we take 1% of 1,000, that's over here. If we take 0 0.01 and multiply it by 1,000, it's going to give us 10. And that means that 10 subjects are expected to have cancer. Okay. Now, the sum of those entries are in the first row, meaning that you would add the first row. Okay. Now, there are... The other 990 subjects do not have cancer. So the other 990 subjects down here do not have cancer. So the sum of the entries in the second row of the values is therefore 990. So that means if we take 1000, subtract 10, and what's left over is the 990. Okay. Now among the 990 subjects without cancer, 10% get positive test results. So 10% of the 990 cancer-free subjects in the second row get positive test results. So that means over here, if you have going to here it says among the 990 subjects, 10% get positive test results. So we need to find 10% of 990. So 10% of 990 gives us 99, not 9. And therefore, over here, we would get the 99, which is the false positive. And that is the entry in the second row. So let me make sure that this says should be 99 here. Okay. So again, 10% of the 990 is 99, which gives us that result. 
Now, for the 990 subjects in the second row, we know the following. 99 tested positive, so the other 891 must be negative. So we're going to see the entry in the 891 below. So basically what we're doing is, is that we're taking 990 subtracting the 89 to give us the 891 in this row here. Now, among the 10 subjects with cancer in the first row, 80% of the test results are positive. So we're going to take 80% of the 10 subjects in the first row, and then we get the value of 8. So that means if we take 80% of the 10 subjects, and that's going to give us the value of 8. So that's how we get the value of 8 in that row, which is the true positive. And then in order to find 2, we would then take the total of 10 and then subtract the 8. So if we take that 10 and then subtract the 8, we end up getting the value of 2. Okay? Now, we know what the total is of the first row, which is 10. We know the total for the second row is 990. And the total, the entirety, is 1,000 because 10 plus 990 is 1,000. Now, I want you to make note here. If we look at the positive test result, what is the total for the first column? Where 8 plus 99 is going to give us 107. That means 107 had a positive test result. If we add 2 with 891, we get 893. That means 893 had a negative test result. And again, if you look at the row, 10 had, a, had cancer, 990 had no cancer. Now, to find the probability of having cancer, given that you have a positive test result, we see that the first column of values includes the positive test results. In that first column, the probability of randomly selecting a subject with cancer is the following. We have the probability of having cancer given that there's a positive test result. So if we take a look at the value of having cancer in that first column, we know that there's 8. And now, what represents the positive test result? Well, the positive test result is the total in that column. So the total in that column is going to be 8 plus 99, which is 107. So we have this 8 divided by 107, which gives us 0 0.746635, which is equal to 0 0.0748 rounded to four decimal places. So the interpretation is that for the data given in this example, a randomly selected subject has a 1% chance of cancer. But for a randomly selected subject given a test with a positive test result, the chance of cancer increases to 7.48%. If we, if we move that decimal over twice or multiply it by 100%, we end up getting 7.48%. So based on the data given in this example, a positive test result should not be devastating news because there is still a good chance the test is wrong.